what does it take when somebody is standing up and consistently telling you that your children are not your own? They belong to us. Yeah. Now, if you go back through history in that mentality, when leaders have always talked about going after children, going after youth, being at Adolf Hitler, being Stalin, being Lenin, being Mao, all the way back to Castro, Pharaoh. all the way back to Pharaoh, it never ends up well. But that's the rhetoric that we have happening here. And what they will do is to consistently tell Pastor Larry and all the pastors and the people in the church, you should not get involved in this because you're violating separation of churches. Yeah. When actually what Thomas Jefferson was talking about was the government not getting involved into the church's business. That's exactly right. And that's where we have come that's to. That's exactly right. You know, uh, Colonel, one of the things that we talked about a lot in the back, and you were, you said it so powerfully that the answer to where our country's going is the Christians. Mm -hmm. One of the things that's always confused me is how can you call yourself a Christian and vote for people who are pro-abortion, vote for people who, you know, my grandson just started kindergarten and they want to come in to the kindergarten level and teach them on the transgender issue to kids who are just learning ABC. How can, what, what's, your, what's your answer to people who say, you know, I'm a Christian, but I'm going to vote for someone and put someone in office who wants to kill innocent babies, who wants to bring this transgender issue into our schools, as a strong Christian, as a military officer, as an ex-congressman, what's your answer to that? You're stuck on stupid. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't, I don't know any All right, good night, everybody. Thank you for coming. <laughs> it's all been said. I mean, okay, <laughs> if you're in the church, all right, and, and I'm reading from Deuteronomy chapter thir uh, 30, verse 19, I'll call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I've set before you life and death and the blessing and the curse. So choose life mm. in order that you may live, you and your descendants. Yeah. So there it is. So if you're a Christian, uh, you know, you subscribe to the Judeo-Christian faith heritage, I mean, it's right here before you. So I don't know what, what your confusion is. Now, I can go back to Genesis, and he talks about God created man and woman, male and female, Adam and Eve. See, again, this religion is of the left is very dangerous because it's kind of like the Tower of Babel. God is not omnipotent. God is not omniscient to them. Secular humanism means that you can do just as good as God, and, and you're better than God, and you really can dismiss God. So that, you know, God is not so perfect and so all-knowing that he can just make male and female. You can choose to be whatever you want. And because of the technology that we have created, because we're so smart, you know, right. we're going to you know, build a tower all the way up and we can touch God. You know, we can change you from being male to female, from female to male. But let me tell you something. When you die, it'll only be one or two things, male, female. Yeah. Years from now, when they dig up your bones, they're going to say, you're either male or you're female. So all of this exterior stuff that man believes that he can do it does not change what God has created. But yet, the left wants you to believe that they can change what God has created. I mean, I was in Congress down in South Florida, okay? And, and I got asked the question, well, you know, Congressman West, do you believe in climate change? I was like, yeah, winter, spring, summer, and fall. <laughs> the climate changes. I mean, I, I don't understand people saying it's too hot. Well, it's summer. Yeah. yeah, and it's going to get hot in the summer. Yeah, and when I was in Kandahar, Afghanistan, in the summer, it was 133 degrees. It was hot, but you know where it's not hot? Go to Brazil. Go to South America, and see that's the perfectness of how God created this earth. In that here we are in this hemisphere, and we're experiencing summer, but because of the equinox, the rotation mm -hmm. of the sun, they're experiencing winter. Yeah. Remember the stupidity of having the Summer Olympics in Brazil, but it was winter for them? <laughs> and I was watching the people doing beach you yeah. know, volleyball, and they're out there freezing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that had nothing to do with climate change. That's how God has made things. Exactly. But yet they want you to believe that you're the ones that are affecting weather patterns and things and all this nature because they want to have more power and more control. They want to say that God is not omnipotent. God is not omniscient. It is man. 
that can do all of these things. So that's why we got to study. We got to challenge people. And if you're in the church, especially our pastors, if you are doing things that are contrary to the to the word of the Lord, then you're in conflict with yourself. And I think that we've got to have more pastors and 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 more members of the church stand up for what is right and what is true, or else you, 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 the truth is not in you. Yeah. Jesus is yeah. the way, he is the truth, yeah. and he is the life. And so either you accept that truth or not. And and this is a trying time yeah. for the body of Christ. You know, and, we, we talked about this, and I'd like you to keep going with this, mm-hmm. uh, Colonel, because we talked about this. A lot of pastors will say, and, we, and I know what your answer will be, but I want you to say it. A lot of pastors will say, well, it's not the church's business to deal with political issues. And abortion is a political issue, but it's a spiritual issue. Yeah, it's right here. Uh, changing the sex of our children may be a political issue, but it is a spiritual yes. issue. How important is it that Christians stand up and speak out about this? Uh, it is absolutely important because if it is in the, the Word of God, then it's an issue that you can speak out about. And uh, Kelly Shackelford over at First Liberty yep. will tell you that you have that right to be able to do so. You have the freedom of religion and the free exercise thereof. You have the freedom of speech. You have the freedom of expression. Uh, how interesting it was just in Los Angeles today or yesterday, you had parents that were going out and, you know, protesting yeah. about the things that they're seeing happening in schools and things of nature or being told that you will lose custody of your child if you don't affirm your child's desire to yeah. change their gender. Yeah. Uh, and, and so as they're going out and protesting, then you get this group called Antifa that are going out there and protesting and, and trying to beat up the parents when it says, I think, train up a child in the way that they should go so when they grow older they should not depart from it, it doesn't say government can train up the child no. in the way. It, it's talking to you. That's right. And you have that authority in your house. What did, what did Joshua say? He said, choose for yourselves today whom you shall serve. In chapter 24, verse 15, you know, you can serve the gods of the Amorites or the gods from across the river, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, all of a sudden, the government is coming in and, and telling you that, first of all, you can't have this type of stove in your house. You can't have this dishwasher, but your children are not ours, and so you can't even train up your own children. Yeah. This yeah. is a complete overreach, and I think it's so important that we have to realize and understand that this whole thing about Christians not getting involved— Jesus Christ was a political figure. Yes, he was. Jesus Christ took on the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Now, he did say when they asked, they tried to trick him about the little, you know, taxes and everything, and he said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar, but render unto God what is God's. Well, all the earth and all that is within is God's. Come on. And, and we have been given this power through his word to be able to talk about these things, and we cannot self-censor, and we cannot be silenced. And you, you, I know you, you, we, we talked about, you know, pastors, they have to say, yeah, you know, brother, I can't be talking about that stuff because, you know, I lose my 501c3 status <laughs> and uh, they, they, they'll come and get me. Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> when you go up on Judgment Day, Pastor, and you're standing before right. the Lord, he ain't going to ask you, how did you manage your 501c3 status? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's yeah. not. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. Uh, for those of you that maybe don't know, the 501c3 makes the church non-taxable. And the thing that they've thrown out that if you as a church or especially as a pastor say something that's political, we can come in and take your 501c3 and start taxing your church. But when we were... Well, Hunter Biden must be a 501c3 because he was (laughs) non-taxable. Oops, I'm sorry. I didn't (laughs) say it. I didn't say it. That's good. But you brought up (laughs) Kelly Shackelford when we were with President Trump a couple weeks ago. Uh, Kelly came on on Zoom. And he said, just because you're a pastor doesn't mean you've lost your freedom of speech. As a right. pastor, right. You, you not only have the right to say whatever you feel, you but according to the Bible, as a pastor or a Christian, we have an obligation yes. to say. Yes. Right? And that's what the Bible says, be not many teachers, yes. pastor, for yes. greater is your condemnation, not only for what we teach, but for what we don't no. teach. And yes. I love the way you said it just now, and you said it in the back, Colonel, yeah. is that when we stand before God, he's not going to ask us about our 501c3. <laughs> he's going to ask us, Did you, were you a shepherd over the sheep in which I put you 
uh, the privilege of leading. Well, and, and you know, I'm, I'm reading now from Romans chapter 1, starting verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. Mm. Because that which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his internal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what was made so that they are without excuse. For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations and their foolish hearts was dark, darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man and of birds, four-footed animals, and crawling creatures. For they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forgive them." Uh, for this reason, God gave them over to their degrading passions. For their women exchanged the natural function for that which is unnatural. Men with men committing indecent acts. Okay, so this is addressed in the Bible. 